I will ask this question from Chris Freed from Philadelphia and whoever wants to take this on stage. From raw material purchases by Berkshire subsidiaries, are you seeing signs of inflation beginning to increase? We're seeing very substantial inflation. It's very interesting. I mean, it, it, we're raising prices. People are raising prices to us. Uh, and it's being accepted. I mean, it's not... Inflation, what started off as a supposed scare tactic, has now become reality. Across the board, Americans around the states face higher prices in nearly every single sector, ranging from real estate to food. While the official CPI rate is still relatively low, other prices that impact specific populations are seeing numbers that should be putting the Federal Reserve in panic mode. For an example, the average price of a single-family home has gone up to $285,000. That's nearly $40,000 more than the pre-pandemic levels in early 2020. Used car prices are up nearly 30% year over year, and fuel costs are up 50%, going from about $2 a gallon to just over 3 according to the latest statistics. Many economists and even the Federal Reserve claim this is just temporary, transitional inflation, caused by an unprecedented pandemic, pent-up demand, and shortened supply. But given the facts I just showed you, it doesn't seem like any of these price hikes are slowing down anytime soon. Where this is headed, nobody really knows. In fact, many former Federal Reserve employees acknowledge a very interesting fact that is extremely controversial in the economics world. This idea that nobody really knows what causes inflation. Before you click off the video and call me a conspiracy theorist, take a listen to a few facts I'm about to present to you. Economists and central bankers have two theories on inflation. The too much money theory, which states that inflation is a consequence of excessive growth of the money supply, and the other so-called Phillips curve theory, which asserts that inflation occurs when the public's demand for goods and services exceeds the economy's ability to produce them. Now here's the problem. Economists know that the money theory hasn't worked for at least 40 years, while the Phillips curve theory never really worked. Janet Yellen, former chair of the Fed, recently stated at a Brookings Institute conference that we don't really know what has caused inflation to drop so low and to stay there, calling it, quote, puzzling. If you take a look at statistics, the facts do not align with the reality. Since 2008, the Federal Reserve has been operating a massive quantitative easing program that has pumped and printed literally trillions of dollars into the system, increasing the money supply year after year. The inflation rate, however, has remained a steady and low 2%, some years even dipping below that. So what is going on truly? Is there a science to this madness? All along, we were led to believe that inflation was a relatively simple concept, one that could be explained by the money supply or simple demand and supply. But as you can see, this really isn't true. Behind this simple word is an entire world that we can spend hours and hours discussing. Many academics and scholars have tried to pinpoint the causes of this wild phenomenon that is known to end empires and begin wars. But ultimately, it's a really big mystery. And a large reason for that may be the fact that inflation is more of a state of mind. This may sound like crazy horoscope crap, but I promise you it's real. It's called inflation psychology, or the state of mind that leads consumers to spend more quickly than they otherwise would in the belief that prices are rising. This is not something we Americans have experienced in decades, but we're seeing glimpses of this in the housing market where consumers will spend their money on a product immediately if they think the price is going to increase shortly. The rationale for this decision is that consumers believe they can save some money by buying the product now rather than later. Inflationary psychology can become a self-fulfilling prophecy because as consumers spend more and save less, the velocity of money increases, further boosting inflation and contributing to inflation psychology. This in certain cases can get really, really bad, and this vicious cycle can explode into hyperinflation. Preventing scenarios like this is the responsibility of the United States Federal Reserve, and if you listen to their words, you'd be convinced they got all the math and science figured out. Um, in, we do expect that inflation will move up uh, over the course of this year, first because of um, what we call base effects, the, the very low readings of March and April of last year drop out of the 12-month calculation and mechanically it rises, but that goes away quite quickly. Uh, possibly after that, we'll see a situation in which uh, as the economy reopens and vaccina vaccination continues, there could be a surge in spending and there could be some bottlenecks in the economy. We see, we see some of that now. We might see some upward pressure on prices. Our best view 
is that these uh, the effect on inflation will be neither particularly large nor persistent. And part of that just is that we've been living in a world of strong disinflationary pressures around the world, really, for a quarter of a century. And we, we don't think that uh, a one-time uh, uh, surge in spending leading to temporary price increases would disrupt that. However, we have the tools to deal with that. We remain strongly committed to inflation expectations anchored at 2%, and we'll, we'll use our tools as appropriate to achieve that. But this just isn't true, and the facts are out there. Playing God in the world's biggest economy is more art than science. Just go back to 2007 and read the Fed statements from back then. You would be convinced that there was absolutely no danger in the housing market, but the reality was very, very different. So how do we protect ourselves against this hidden economic force that seems to be emerging from the shadows? Well, if you watched the most recent Swedish investor video, he touches on exactly this. But because this video was a wide scope version of inflation hedges, I'm going to focus this video's attention on one specific category, the Mount Rushmore of true inflation hedges. These investments are above the unproductive assets like gold and Bitcoin and above the mediocre stocks. This category the Swedish investor calls the great type of productive assets. These are companies that one, have low capital requirements, giant moats, and huge margins. This question comes from Mark Jordan in Charleston, South Carolina. He writes, in a period of high inflation, which particular businesses owned by Berkshire Hathaway will perform the best, and which will perform the worst, and why? Well, the businesses that will perform the best are the ones that require little capital investment to facilitate inflationary growth and that have strong positions that allow them to increase prices with inflation. And, uh, um, you know, we have, we have a candy business, for example, and the value of the dollar since we bought that candy business has probably fallen uh, at least 85 percent, I would say, 80 to 85 percent. And that candy business uh, sells 75 percent more pounds of candy than it did uh, when we bought it, but it has 10 times the revenues, and it doesn't take a lot more capital. So that kind of a business, any business that can has enough freedom to price to offset inflation and doesn't require commensurate investment or a huge investment to support it, will do well. So what are these companies specifically? Well, look no further than a list of sectors predicting the highest margins. The one that always stands out, software and technology. Software companies or techs with low capital requirements and high moat are mostly the FANG type. Let's use Apple as an example. This is a powerhouse who produces truly remarkable profits quarter after quarter. Apple's return on assets is around 22%. Compare that to a giant oil company like Chevron, which ROA is around minus 3%. Looking around the industry, you cannot go wrong investing with Google, Facebook, Microsoft, or Apple. All of these classic tech giants have similar ROAs. These giant companies show continual massive growth and will be needed regardless of inflation numbers. If you are picking for protection, these are your go-to names. It's no wonder if you watched my last video, even Michael Berry, who has a giant put position in Tesla and U.S. Treasuries, is very bullish on Google, Apple, and Microsoft, and other similar names. This is by no accident. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, please make sure you smash that subscribe button if you enjoyed. Oh, and don't forget, consider signing up for BlockFi using my affiliate link down below. Sign up with BlockFi, and for a limited time, you can earn a crypto bonus of up to $250 when you open up a new account.